Moving to our next disease, frog eye leaf spot, caused by the pathogen Cercospora sagina, frog eye leaf spot for the most part is not a major disease in Louisiana, although there have been individual fields that have been um, devastated by it. But historically and statewide, we see very little damage due to frog eye. There is resistance to this particular fungus in our, um, in our environment. And so with that, we are maintaining close eye on it and making sure that it does not spread and become an epidemic in uh, many of our fields. As far as the frog eye leaf spot symptoms and occurrence, we find that symptoms occur during the early reproductive stages or even a little later. Uh, the initial symptoms are found predominantly as spots on the leaves in the mid and lower canopy. In that particular area, we, we are maintaining high moisture level, high humidity, and that allows for uh, development of the, of the disease to occur. Later symptoms uh, also appear as spots, sometimes even larger on petiole stems and pods. Uh, initially, we have the small chocolate brown uh, spots that can be found on the leaflets. If the disease continues to develop, uh, the mature lesions are lighter in brown or have gray centers with reddish brown margins. The stem lesions are kind of rare, but if they are found, they're elliptical with red centers and a dark brown to black margins. The pod lesions, though, look a little different. They are uh, circular or elliptical in shape, and they are sunken, and they're light gray to brown. But this is not a, a symptom that we see very often. These are the early symptoms of the leaf spot. The tiny leaf spot you see there with the center uh, being gray or tan with a uh, darker brown uh, uh, um, ring around it. And this is a close-up of some of those lesions that have expanded. And uh, if uh, this number of lesions would be found on an entire plant, uh, then, then we would have uh, an epidemic starting in that particular area. But usually we see just a few uh, spots on a few leaves or leaflets, and this is the extent of the, of the disease development. As far as the conditions for development, uh, the disease favors uh, warm, humid weather, and the pathogen can survive on seeds or in infected uh, plant debris. That being said, uh, that is part of our management scheme then to bury the crop residue uh, immediately after harvest. When planting, always use fungicide treated seed and fungicides are available that will control this pathogen very, very well. Looking at uh, soybean rust, this uh, pathogen that causes rust is Phacopsora pecorizae. Soybean rust was a disease that back in 2004 was first found in North America, just south of campus. And it was found by a colleague who then became very famous because this was the first time that soybean rust had been found in North America. We believe that it came in on the steering winds of Hurricane Ivan. And we believe that the impact that it will have has varied through the years since then. Uh, so far, no major epidemics, although individual fields have had losses to 60 and 70 percent. As far as soybean rust symptoms and occurrence are concerned, actually the, the symptoms are very difficult to find in the field due to their small size, and they begin on the lower leaves uh, of the plant inside the canopy and thus in scouting for it you must look within that particular canopy and look at canopies near tree lines where there is more moisture held for a longer period of time during the day. It also is a, a nice area where the temperature is a little more moderate than in the middle of a field where the sun is quite hot. Uh, the symptoms can be found on any growth stage of the soybean, but what we find here in Louisiana mostly 
is the uh, symptom development in the mid R3 to late R6 reproductive stages. As I mentioned, the symptoms are in the lower canopy, it's small brown to tan raised pustules that are volcano-like in shape with a, a tiny opening at the top called an osteole, and these are found on the underside of lower leaves. Spores are produced in these pustules and are released. Initially, they look like small grains of sand. They're sort of tan in color, and then as they uh, become older, they are darker in color. But as the disease progresses, the pustules can coalesce and cause blighted areas on the leaflets, causing the leaflets then to defoliate if the incidence is high enough. Pustules also can be present on the petioles and pods where the disease is severe, but this is a rare symptom. There are many, many other hosts for uh, soybean rust. The one that we have most evident in our state is kudzu, and that's true of most of the southeastern states. But kudzu is another host. Uh, it survives very nicely on that host, and sometimes in warm winters uh, will overwinter on kudzu along our coastline. These are the symptoms on the bottom of lower leaves of kudzu. You can see there the tiny uh, areas of brown. Inside each of those areas of brown are multiple pustules that are volcano-like, as was mentioned before. The same type of symptom is seen on soybean rust. Again, in each cluster, there is um, uh, a volcano uh, type pustule or more than one where uh, spores are being uh, exuded and then spread to other leaves in the, in the area, both uh, locally and then in some cases many miles away. As far as conditions are concerned, typically we find that the temperatures between 59 and 77 degrees Fahrenheit are best for rust development. The leaves need to remain wet for six to 10 hours, but we have found in the last few years that even higher temperatures will support uh, soybean rust development. As far as management is concerned, we have no long-term resistant varieties. And uh, there have been efforts in many countries to produce single gene resistance to soybean rust, have been successful with that, but unfortunately because of the uh, single gene resistance, the, the varieties have been overcome by the rust very easily. Fungicides will help, timing is very important, but timing should be early enough that uh, rust does not develop or if symptoms are just beginning and a few pustules have been found on the leaf, success can be had with fungicides. If the disease is established in, uh, in the soybeans, fungicides will be of no consequence simply because uh, too much infection has occurred. The fungicides do not reverse that process, but it will continue to grow, develop, and defoliate the plants, giving us a reduction in yield.